that we can. So this seems to be the best. All right, Kuna, thank you so much. We didn't need to hear all that anyway, so that's good. <laughs> um, so I just want to uh, set the table a little bit for this first session before we go on. I, I, I believe for the next few sessions, for the next however many sessions we're together, we're planning round 12. Uh, what we're going to do is, um, is uh, prepare and dine a spiritual meal together and prepare it with a motive that we're going to feed others with it. Because in this program, my experience has been that um, God's flow and love and energy has to flow through me into the lives of others. That's how I get nourished. That's how I uh, experience bliss uh, in, in this moment. You know, um, if, it, if it's any other way, if it is any other motive other than pass it on to someone else, be of service for some reason, my ego takes a hold of it and it just... Uh, it's not a fun, <laughs> fun process or a fun time. Uh, so we're going to, before we do that, we're going to dine the spiritual meal together and prepare it together. Uh, I, I want to set the table a little bit, if it's okay with you guys. By the way, you guys can hear me okay? A wave, yeah? Yeah, okay, good. Okay, <laughs> I want to set the table. Um, uh, f first of all, um, I, I want to say this right off the bat. Uh, I, I am the least favorite and comfortable thing for me to do is to do a workshop. I never do workshops like this ever, right? Um, I just, uh, the reason for that is I, I, I don't ever want to come across as I'm teaching anybody or telling anybody what to do. So please, I hope, I hope that comes across in the spirit, um, in my spirit as we're going through this, because uh, I'm not here to teach anybody. I'm not here to tell you what to do. What I'm here to do is just share with you my experience. Uh, so, um, Having having said that, that that so when I approach, I, I believe when we approach it this way, uh, everyone's experience becomes valuable. No one's better than anyone else, right? God uses everybody in different ways, uh, and, and I believe that uh, um, the the people that are on this in this workshop, uh, we're all we all share something. We're all seekers and servants, right? Because of the step twelve kind of sponsorship uh, sponsorship workshop. So please, if I ever say anything that's contrary to your belief systems. Uh, I don't ask you to believe it um, at all. What I ask you to do is just set, uh, set what you believe aside for the duration of this process. That's all. So I guess it's a good time to talk about the set aside prayer. <laughs> so um, the, I think that to how to get the most out of any new endeavor that uh, any new spiritual process, any, anything new that I try is to set aside everything that I know and everything that I think I know and my past experiences. Because for me, all those things seem to be in the way of me having a new experience. Mark Houston, God bless his soul, he used to say, what I think I know my past experiences are loose around my neck. <laughs> they stop me from having a new experience. Now that doesn't uh, invalidate, is that? Uh, 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 anyone's experience at all, your experiences to set it aside. All we're saying is that to have a new experience, um, just please put a, put your own experience on the shelf right now, and then see what occurs. Okay, this is um, it's it's like it's like when I want to drink a, a fresh cup of coffee, right? Uh, I'm not gonna take yesterday's coffee and bring into the freshly brewed pot. It doesn't make sense. I pour it on top. Okay, what I do is I. Pour out the coffee, wash it out, and bring a clean, empty cup. That's how I, I, I always want to approach every spiritual, new spiritual endeavor, any situation in life that I'm trying to grow from. Bring an empty cup to God. Let him fill me with whatever he thinks that I need at that time. Um, now, you may say, my coffee is not old. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't, it still tastes good, and that's perfectly fine. You, so let's just look, think about it this way, okay? So you have an amazingly brewed, fresh cup of coffee of experience of, I'm going to make something up, of Brazilian coffee, okay? But we're in a workshop to perhaps try some Colombian coffee, just as freshly brewed as yours, right? In order to try the Colombian coffee, you're going to have to pour out the Brazilian coffee just for this workshop. <laughs> okay, maybe if you want to think about it that way. Um, so. Set aside prayer, how the set aside prayer uh, came about, just quickly, 
Uh, Don Pritz, uh, I'm sure many people know or heard of Don Pritz. He was a giant uh, in Alcoholics Anonymous. Uh, he had a sponsee by the name of Joe Hawk. Apparently, the story goes. And Joe uh, was a learned man. He had many degrees in addiction, and he couldn't stay sober for 10 years or so. He was in and out. He asked Don to sponsor him. And apparently, every time Don Pritz would meet Joe, Joe had uh, he knew a lot about the psychology and the biology of alcohols and about the big book. And Don said to him in not so many words, Joe, I suggest you set aside everything you think you know, because you know enough about alcoholism to kill yourself and many others. So if you want to have a new experience, set everything aside. <laughs> so Joe did that. And then he made that into a prayer. And that's apparently that's how the prayer has been passed on to many different generations and lineages. So uh, if you guys don't mind, I'm just going to do a version of the set aside prayer. Uh, um, uh, by the way, the words don't really matter. The exact words, uh, I always want to stay away from rigidity. I got to wear this world like a loose garment uh, and whatever is on your heart, as long as we voice the idea. So I'll do it today. Maybe from next week, we'll get other people to do it. Father, thank you for bringing us here in brotherhood, sisterhood, and love under one spirit, under your spirit. Please set aside from us everything that we know, everything that we think we know in our past experiences, so we can have an open mind and a new experience with you, with these steps, with each other, and the process of being a servant. Amen. All right, set aside prayer. Beautiful. So we covered that. I got some notes here. So just, just quickly, how this, a uh, little bit about, again, I'm still setting the table. We're going to jump right in. Okay, We're going to go through with velocity, hopefully, depending, right? So just briefly, how this workshop came about and a little bit of my experiences, that's all, okay, just briefly. So um, uh, this, um, so for the past uh, four years of the pandemic, we've just been really blessed at the Fellowship of the Spirit Toronto uh, Conference online workshop. We've done a lot of online workshops and, and, and conferences and, and, and everything. It's just been a blessing. And I, I want everyone to know that all those workshops, uh, they were strong and would have thoughts that came from meditation. Um, and for a while, I didn't want to answer it. And then it gets it gets really loud and you can't answer it. You cannot not answer it, right? So this thing of doing this particular workshop has been knocking on my door for about a few years. I just didn't want to answer it for different reasons, right? And it just got really, really loud. And I was talking with my friend, Alice, and I said to her, listen, this idea I have, I think it may, may be really beneficial, may be able to serve people. What do you think? And then she was she, she, she really liked it. And she said, you know what? I think I would love to come. I benefit from it. And I said, okay, so then let's, so that's how, that's how it started. Okay. So, um, I, uh, I, I truly believe that, uh, um, this step, uh, sponsoring, uh, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we try not perfectly, not a thousand sponsees. I try, <laughs> try to pass this message on. Uh, to other alcoholics and practice principles in our affairs. So what we're doing is passing this message on to other alcoholics. I believe this uh, this this step, the 12th step, and this in particular is what gives my life meaning and purpose. I have I live a juicy life today because of this step. There's been a lot of trials and tribulations in my life that I would not have survived if it wasn't for this step, but trying to pass this message on. I was at three months sober when I started to sponsor people in this way. And I know that's not everyone's experience and I'm not, that doesn't have to be. I was in and out for seven years. And I think the elders around me, my sponsor at that time, I, I think maybe they had a private meeting together and they said, this kid better pass something on or else he's going to die. He's sicker than most. <laughs> I think maybe that's what happened. So my sponsor at the time came to me and said, you got to pass this message on. And I just, and I argued with her because I was scared. I was afraid. I know maybe there, there may be some friends on this call right now that may be younger in sobriety and maybe your sponsor has told you it's time to pass this message on. I was afraid, I thought I'm not good enough. And I was reminded that I'm not gonna be doing anything. I have tapped into a power. All I gotta do is exactly what was done with me. So my sponsor at the time at three months sober, uh, um, I, I love her. She's still on my life. She's not my sponsor anymore. Donna, native Indian lady, she had about nine years sober. And her experience was that she was taken to the big book from the preface to, uh, to page 164. And if you haven't had the big book experience that I'm so grateful that you're here, buckle up. <laughs> it's, it's something, it's powerful. It's powerful. Um, it, so, so Donna was taken that way and, and she's just, uh, 
man, she's a servant. She sponsored so many people. And her experience started to, she started to experience that she's losing people in, in, in this process because it's taking so long for some, right? So then she went to uh, different conferences, sought out archivists, read up on history books, did all kinds of stuff. And then she sort of prayer, meditation, contemplation, she came up with a method. It's still in the big book, right? Where, where it's more efficient, especially the first couple of steps, because the first step covers 50 something pages. There's a lot in there, right? So she passed that on to me and I woke up. I was set on fire at three, uh, uh, when I, within, you know, at three months I started to sponsor people. So going back to the sponsorship, and she asked me to, she asked me to sponsor and uh, start to pass this message on. And I argued with her and, uh, and then, uh, and she pointed out to me that if, if Bill Wilson and Dr. Bob Smith had, had run some rule written in stone that we have to have one year to start passing these 12 steps on, we would all be dead. There would be no alcoholics anonymous maybe, you know, now, uh, 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 and, and, uh, and obviously like I, I understand at that time, there was no other choice. Everyone's short in short term in sobriety, young in sobriety, right? And these days, we have so many amazing, beautiful long timers, some of whom are uh, on this call who I admire, who I want what they have. Or, you know, I just I admire them so much. Um, but the, and there is may not be a space as much as it was back then for people younger in sobriety to start to pass this message on in this way, right? So. Um, I, I, I was, I was, you know, reminded of how this thing started. That 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 it didn't start because Bill Wilson had an agenda to keep pe people sober, right? He tried that for the first six months. He failed. He stayed sober, but the language of love didn't start. At about six months sobriety, as we all know, right? He's in the Mayflower Hotel, back and forth, pacing. The dream calls him, and then the spirit turns his gaze to the to, to the phone directory. And then one phone, few phone calls here and there, where it was supposed to be a 15 minute conversation at six months sober, turned out to be six hours and the language of love started. And the waves of the language of love are traveling what, almost 89 years later with us. And we're writing it right now <laughs> in our lives, you know, in, in, in this workshop. So that's what we're trying to do. They were all young in sobriety. So uh, the first person that I sponsored, uh, I, I had, um, this way, uh, I had at that time three months. Uh, Ramsey had uh, uh, 16 months. Uh, he knew me in and out of the program for seven years, and people saw such a transformation in me. And he came to me and said, Ali, I've never, you talk about going through the big book, the steps that's outlined in the big book. Uh, I've never had that experience. I've had other experiences, but whatever you're talking about, can you help me with that? Uh, and, I, and I reminded him that you're sober almost two years. He said, I don't care. Can you help me? I said, okay. So, so, so I would go to this man's condo. I would take the uh, uh, subway and bus uh, all the way downtown Toronto three days a week, uh, scared in the uh, uh, shaking sort of, you know, nervous in the elevator right up. And I would pray. I would open up the big book and I would just do exactly what was done with me. The most beautiful thing. What, see, what I was taught is that I don't have to duplicate the messenger. That's a really difficult thing to do. All I got to do is duplicate the message. So I just follow the black and the white, highlight this, ask yourself this. And then all of a sudden, when I saw Ramsey's eyes light up, when I saw this man transform, I was like, holy moly, this thing really works. <laughs> right? So, so Ramsey went out to sponsor a bunch of people. And then, and then, and then I, went, uh, I, I went to a, a men's shelter a few months down the road and I was set up a meeting over there and I would read three pages from the big book. And these men, I guess they trusted my shorter time in sobriety, not the validity of it, the tangibility of it. You know, when you knew like six months, is okay, maybe I can get five months, four months, but 30 years, sometimes like, what are you talking about? <laughs> right? That's like a different universe, right? So. So I, I would go and back, I go, go every me every every week saying the same thing. I'm I'm sober. I'm I'm happy most of the time. At four or five months of sobriety, these men start to trust me. They would come to me after the meeting. Ali, can you help us? Whatever it is you've been doing with this big book you talk about, twelve steps. Sure, I can. I would make appointments at the cafeteria and the coffee shops. Go to the big, <laughs> right? Um, so uh, through through the years, uh, we're gonna start soon. Okay, we have to. Uh, through the years, I've had 
the blessing of um, uh, sponsoring, attempting to pass it, attempting to sponsor uh, the 12 steps in this way, uh, many, many, many men. Um, I could tell you, um, it's blown my mind the transformations that I'm able to witness, um, as many of you are, as, as many of you are. And, and through the years, the Spirit has called me to try many different methods of going through the big book, many different methods. I love some of the methods, like the big book awakening. There's so many, so many, so many, so many, right? Um, and I want everyone to know that this today is a combination spiritual evolution, what the spirit has presented to me over the last 12 years of sponsoring people, right? So um, I remember my original sponsor, Donna, she had five highlighters and this and that. So this is becoming even more efficient. There's only two highlighters and a lot less notes and we're gonna move through laser-like, especially through the first few steps, okay? So uh, if, if if you guys, um, if some, some friends are here thinking that, um, you know, some some workshops like big book workshops, we go there and and just people that I just want to sit at the feet and just listen to them. I just love them. I admire them so much. You know, they break down a paragraph for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and those are all interesting. They're beautiful. They're spiritual food. I love them. But this is not what this is going to be. So the mindset is always, I'm taking a new man through the steps. Right. So we want to move quickly through it. Um, there's no need to unpack everything to, to, to a, a thousand kilometer depth. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, what will happen is that, um, so I, I guess we could um, talk about this last thing before we get on, is uh, we start. So how to get the most from this workshop? This is just some of my thoughts that came on my heart, right? Uh, first thing is to set aside everything that I think I know. That's the first. Just bring an open cup to this. See what, see what got, right? Uh, uh, Wants, wants to fill me with. Uh, second thing is make everything personal to you. Like uh, what I mean is that we're gonna read statements and turn some of them into questions with a question mark. Do I relate to that? Did I used to be like that? See, this, this book that's a couple of inches thick becomes thousands of kilometers deep when I can pour my experience on it or else it's just an intellectual exercise. When I have another loving soul, see, when the gift of desperation met the window, the grace of God, and inside that window sat one of you guys, armed with facts about yourself, and you poured your heart on the pages of this big book, and then I got to lay my experience next to it. That's how the big book becomes alive, okay? So first thing, set aside everything you know. Second thing, make everything personal to you. Third thing, if you have the motive that I'm in this workshop, not for me to this is the wrong phrase, so please forgive me, but it's coming to me, so I'm gonna share it. To be entertained, <laughs> not for me, not for me to, right? I'm here because I'm gonna pass this message on and maybe I may be able to use this method to, to be more effective as, as, a, as a messenger perhaps, right? So the third thing, the motive, I'm gonna pass this message on. I'm thinking about how would the newcomer receive this? How would the newcomer, new person receive this? Um, and here's the fourth thing. It only, 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 only if you choose to, it only if you move to. The deepest way for me to have any experience is for me to try it fully myself, which means if you are moved to, when we get to the third and fourth and fifth, four steps, actually doing the inventories yourself, actually take, retaking, revisiting the steps yourself. That'll probably the, be the deepest experience that, that anyone can have in any workshop, you know? One is an observer and the other one is a participant, right? One is a, a what do you call it? Um, uh, in the stands, one's in the stands, one's in the game, <laughs> right? So there's, there's two levels and everything in between. All right, I think I've said a lot. I think I covered a lot. Um, Thank you for indulging me. My uh, my apologies. Uh, next week, it won't, uh, I won't have to set the table this much. So let's just... Uh, Let's just get started. Um, if you, for those friends that didn't know, um, I hope you knew because we posted everywhere, you need a clean big book, either hardcover or large print big book, okay? Um, uh, as it was, I think it, it was mentioned earlier, if, if you don't have one today, or if you're gonna, if you're gonna miss uh, some of the session or some of the sessions, no problem at all. Please make some friends here, become partners and your friend can take you through. What, what you missed, okay? So we're gonna start on page 20. 
the first paragraph, it says, first full paragraph, it says, you may have already asked yourself. Okay, so we'll do a little bit and I'll, and I'll, and I'll explain a little bit. Um, you need a yellow highlighter, which is important statements, a pink highlighter, which is prayers and meditations and promises. Now, now, if you have two other color highlighters, no problem. Assign one of them important statements, the other one prayers, okay? No worries, and, and, and a pen. So you may already have asked yourself, why is it that all of us became so very ill from drinking? Question mark after drinking. Put the, if you relate to that, put the yeses on the left margin, approximately where the, where the line is, right? Question mark after drinking. So we're gonna read a bit, I'm gonna come back and talk about it a little bit. Doubtless you are curious to discover how and why in the face of expert opinion to the contrary, if you grab the yellow highlighter now, the one for important statements, start highlighting. We have recovered from a hopeless condition of mind and body. We have recovered from a hopeless condition of mind and body. And if you grab your pen, circle the word recovered. At the end of body, the sentence, put a question mark after that. So were you ever curious how, how people recover from this illness, hopeless condition of mind and body, right? That's what you gotta ask yourself, right? Now, just quickly, just briefly, we circled the word recovered. The, the word recovered is mentioned, I think half a dozen times, somebody said that I count one time or a dozen times in the first 164 pages. All that means is that I'm brought back to health. Okay, we're not gonna get into this big controversy here, okay? <laughs> the big book used the word recovered, we're gonna get back, brought back to health. For example, if I have knee surgery, I've had a knee injury, right? There's a period of time that I'm going to be recovering because my knee hurts. I can barely walk. I got to walk with a cane. I got to go to physio. I got to do exercises. There will come a time where I will recover from the pain of it. Now, I may for the rest of my life need to we'll go to the gym, make sure the muscles, the quad muscles and the hamstrings are strong so I don't get that knee injury again, but I recover from it. I live a normal, happy life now, right? That's all that means, okay? Recovered. Recovered from a hopeless condition of mind and body where I couldn't stop drinking. When I started drinking, I didn't know how much I could drink. I made all the promises in the world that that's it, 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 no more. And I kept on going back to it, right? Question mark, yes, on the left margin. If you're an alcoholic who wants to get over it, you may already be asking yourself, what do I have to do? There's a question mark there. Have you ever asked yourself, what do I have to do? Am I gonna get better, right? Any version of that. You put a yes on the left. Remember, you're taking a new person to this, right? By the way, so it's going to be a little bit difficult to be as laser-like in a group than it is with one-on-one. -on -one. So please forgive me. I'm just, the spirit's going to move me. I'm going to go back and forth to message to the group, message to one-on-one. -on -one. It's going to go back and forth a little bit, okay? Grab the yellow highlighter, please. It is the purpose of this book to answer such questions specifically specifically very important with the pen circle the word specifically please this book has a, a couple of different places i think we agnostic to give it another purpose as well but so to answer all these questions specifically not generally that means there's going to be some clear-cut directions some solution-based stuff right specifically not a philosophical discussion specifically highlight that and circle please we shall tell you what we have done. Before going into a detailed discussion, it may be well to summarize some points as we see them. Okay? So now this paragraph, we're gonna put, put a lot of question marks and a lot of yeses if you, can, if, if you relate to it when you were newer uh, on the left-hand side. Now you ask these questions, these statements, we're gonna turn to questions, right? You ask yourself, has anyone said that about me? Or even we're gonna put the, raise, put the bar really low. Have I even thought that about myself? at all, okay? So here we go. And then when we're finished this paragraph, I wanna do something. And when we finish this paragraph, I'm gonna ask you guys to share um, specifically on the, any of these questions, okay? So it's gonna be not a general sharing, laser-like sharing. This statement, this question, this is what I relate to, okay? So you're gonna have your hands up, we're gonna ask some sharing. So how many times have people said to us, I can take it or leave it alone, why can't he? Question mark, there's a question mark there. If you can relate to that, put a yes on the left margin. Why don't you drink like a gentleman or quit? There's a question mark there. If you thought that about yourself, someone said that about you, left question mark, yes on the left margin. That fellow can't handle his liquor, question mark. 
after liquor. Why don't you try beer or wine? Question mark. Lay off the hard stuff. Willpower, his willpower must be weak? Question mark. My father used to say to me, he was an addict. He still is 77 years old. God bless his soul. Um, he used to say, be a man. You're weak. Because the way his addiction took him destroyed us, right? His addiction was just this. But he was somehow able to still go to work, <laughs> right? Opiate addiction. So, for when, so therefore, I'm not an addict because I can't. So when he saw me that I can't live my life because of this drinking, he was just like, be a man. What's wrong with you? Right? We, he could not stop if he wanted to. Sorry, he could stop if he wanted to. Such a sweet girl. I, I should think he would stop for her sake. Question mark. Anybody here? Thought love would be the answer? <laughs> oh, man, I have some stories, but I'm not gonna, it's going to take too long. <laughs> the, the, the doctor told him that if he ever drank again, it would kill him. But there he is all lit up again. Question mark. Okay. So if you are moved, can we have some hands up? Uh, and how we're going to go about this is... Uh, so if you can relate to any of this, you're going to read it. Um, he could stop if he wanted to, so such a sweet girl, right? This, my, this is how I relate to it. This is the example that I relate to. So anybody at all relate to any of this I want to share quickly? Put up your hands electronically. Kuna, can people put up their hands right now? Okay, perfect. There you go. All right. Frank, do your thing, brother. Samantha, come on up, please. Remember, laser like. Not a long share, laser like, not general share. Hi, friends. I'm an alcoholic. My name's Samantha. Can you all hear me? Okay. Yes. Um, I totally relate to the doctor told me that if I ever drank again, it would kill me. Um, I was in the hospital. I had put myself there through drinking. I had a, I, I was bleeding out and I left the hospital and I went drinking right to the bar. And Thank you, Samantha. Thank you. Beautiful. All ever, but we would love for you to share with your video on. Perfect. Oh. Thank you so much. Hi, Oliver. Uh, grateful for an alcoholic addict. Yeah, I was just telling a newcomer the story the other day where um, my heart rate, I, I used to take a lot of drugs and alcohol. My heart rate, basically, I thought, am I having a panic attack or am I not? And I measured my heart rate and it went down to around 40. And uh, once it went back to normal, it was about an hour before I started using again. After praying to God, please save me, I was using again not long after. So, yeah. Thank you, Oliver. Yvette? It's Yvette, I'm an alcoholic. Um, I can relate to the question, why don't you try beer and wine? Mm. Didn't work. None of it worked. Brown, white, beer, wine. None of it worked. So I can definitely, <clears throat> excuse me, I could definitely relate to that question. Definitely. Thank you so much, Yvette. We're just going to take one more, Rachel. People that have their hands up, you can keep your hands up if you want. We're going to come to another section again that if, if you want to share. It's up to you. Rachel, please. Hey, guys. Sorry about that. My name is Rachel, and I'm an alcoholic. So um, every time I'm going through this and I read this part, she is such a sweet girl. I would think, and I changed that, mm -hmm. she would stop for her sake. I had a, a little girl that was six years old that ended wow. up um, getting removed from my custody, my daughter. Um, and that always hit me hard. And when I'm working with women, I, I tend to point to that in my life. Thank you so much, Rachel. Perfect. That's a uh... Um, we're gonna we're gonna move forward. I, you know what? I've never looked at that line, Rachel. That way, it's always been living like romantic stuff. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for sharing that. So uh, there was a question. Yes. So you put question mark. You put the yeses on this page on the left margin, somewhere close to it, right? As you can relate to. So now these are common observations on drinkers, which we hear all the time. Back of them is a world of ignorance and misunderstanding. We see that these expressions refer to people whose reactions are very different than ours, right? Just ignorance, like don't know. It makes sense. Like to other people, it doesn't make sense that you're destroying your life with your drinking. You're about to get a divorce and lose custody of your kids just because they are, they have the power to do so. So these questions uh, from, from a place of just not knowing, right? It makes sense. I didn't even get it for years and I'm an alcoholic. I thought, what's wrong with me? 
right? Okay, so <clears throat> here we go. So next three paragraphs, pretty important. Moderate drinkers, would you please circle with a pen, just the words, one circle, moderate drinkers. So moderate drinkers have little trouble in giving up liquor entirely if they have good reason for it. They can take it, leave it alone, question mark. Okay, so on the left margin, have you, are you a, do you understand yourself to be a moderate drinker? Okay, we're not asking the question, have you ever been one? But in the totality of your drinking, did you stay a moderate drinker, right? Moderate drinkers, we all know them. They have a, a glass of wine with dinner. It lasts the whole dinner. Like they, they drink a beer, they nurse it. They nurse it to the point it gets warm and they leave it. They go get another cold one and they nurse that too, right? Once in a while, on a special occasion, they get drunk, right? Moderate drinkers. So for me, I have a question mark after the word alone and I have a no to the left margin. That's not me. Here we go. Then we have a, a certain type of hard drinker. Would you please circle a certain type of hard drinker? Circle that entire thing with an oval or whatever, right? With a pen. Notice that, notice that they don't say hard drinker. They say this is a certain type of a hard drinker. Okay, let's let's talk about it now. Let's read it. He may have a habit badly enough to gradually impair him physically and mentally. Question mark. You ask yourself, have I ever had the habit badly enough to impair me physically and mentally in any way? Put a put a little yes in the right margin now. Right or left doesn't matter. It may cause him to die a few years before his time. If it's sufficiently strong reason, ill health, question mark, falling in love, question mark. Change of environment, question mark. Or the warning of the doctor becomes operative, question mark. Just put a big yes to the, and the right margin if any of those things you've experienced from drinking. Ill health, falling in love, uh, while you were drinking, warning of a doctor. Okay, here we go, here's the kicker. Grab the yellow highlighter. This man, it's important to point out, this man, can also stop or moderate. This man can also stop or moderate. Put a question mark after moderate. Now you want to answer this for yourself. When I was drink in my drinking career, did I fall in love? And was that enough for me to stop or moderate? Did I have a doctor tell me I'm gonna, you know, I'm, I'm gonna die or hurt myself? Was that enough? Did I change environments? I moved across the ocean. I went to Dubai. I went to Iran. I took me with me. I destroyed everything we're drinking, right? So for me, yellow highlighter, this man can also stop or moderate question mark. I have a big no right there. Although, this may, this, although he may find, him, uh, find it difficult and troublesome and may even need medical attention. So they're talking about, I got to see if I see myself in this guy, right? And I do see myself in this guy, but not totally. This guy, what they say, this guy or lady mimics the alcoholic behavior in drinking out there when they're Active, right? And they find their ways in the rooms of alcoholics and others. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. There's nothing wrong with that, right? But here's the thing. This man or woman, even though they may need to go to a treatment center or detox or they get suffer a lot of consequences, there will come a time where the universe will present a reason for them, powerful enough for them to just, whoa, are you kidding me? Enough is enough, man. They will stop or even moderate. I have a lot of examples of friends. I'm not going to bore you with them right now. So the important thing is you want to ask yourself. The newcomer want to ask yourself, is that me? Has that been me? Right? For me, there's a big no. There's a big no. Okay. So now the next paragraph, three important paragraphs. In, in this book, <clears throat> it, it, there's a few different places. They sort of uh, uh, categorize drinkers a little bit. One is here. It's a very powerful one pertinent to what we're doing here. One is a doctor's opinion we're going to cover later um and, and then the, the dr suckworth even says it's beyond the scope of this book but here we'll try right and then one actually really good, good places in the to the wives with four types of four types of drinkers and you know that, that's a really nice place anyway so so but what about the real alcoholic here we go <laughs> please highlight in yellow only highlight the real alcoholic in yellow or whatever highlighter you have assigned as for important statements 
circle your highlight just to make it stand out more, the real alcohol. Okay. He may start off as a moderate drinker. He may or may not become a continuous hard drinker, but at some, okay, but grab the yellow highlighter now, please. The yellow highlighter from at some stage to the end of this paragraph in yellow. At some stage of his drinking career, he begins to lose lose all control of his liquor consumption once he starts to drink. Once he starts to drink, that's in yellow. Okay, put a question mark for yourself. If you can relate to that in your drinking career, put a yes right next to the right of the, just not in the margin to the right of the question. Mark. Okay, so the real alcoholic, they're going to introduce us to that, right? What it, what it may be for the, for the newcomer. So what they highlighted in this paragraph is the physical allergy. Once I start to drink, I lose control of it, right? But in the previous paragraph, they also alluded to that I've been sober. People that are sober seem to have all the reason in the world, falling in love, changing environment, operative, doctor, ill health, and they can't stay sober. Okay, so we're going to just describe for the newcomer right now, just give them a little peek of what it means to be an alcoholic. Okay, and notice this, by the way, this, so we're going to go 20, all the way to just the top of 23 for this section. It is such a powerful first session. I call it like a pre-qualification. If someone is a potentially one of us, they're trying to explore they're going to be able to relate to some of this, man, <laughs> you know, and it just will, what I found is that the new man or woman, it just captures them. They're like, what? Okay. They want to know more. You know what I mean? So that, so just so you know, I'll mention this uh, throughout the, the workshop in the step one pages. So there's a lot more people with a lot more experience, a lot smarter than me. They've gone through the big book for years and years and years. And I agree with their analysis that it seems to be from the doctor's opinion to page 43, the end of chapter three, more about alcoholism, approximately about 53 pages. There's a lot covered, but the main focus is the first half of the first step. 53 pages on, we admitted that we were powerless over alcohol. Physical allergy, mental obsession. Physical allergy, mental obsession, right? So, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna really efficiently jump around the, the first step pages and just to get the meat and potatoes of physical allergy, mental obsession. That's where the efficiency of this comes from. First and second step. Okay, so let's go back to that. So from the real alcoholic, from the real alcoholic that we circled is highlighted at the top of that paragraph, right? Everyone see it? What I so I'm going to try to describe this. I hope I describe it properly. So if you please draw a line from that circle, draw a line to the right margin. Now your right margin is clean. Draw a line to the right margin. Put a little arrow. Okay. You're going to turn your big book counterclockwise 90 degrees. So now the right margin is facing you. Okay. And you're going to write across now. See this? We're going to write across now. I'm going to show it this time, but next time you'll, you'll understand, right? So we're going to write across. We're going to all the way down. Please write this. I'm going to read slowly. There, so real alcohol, right? There is no reason strong enough for me to stay stopped. I'll keep repeating it. Try to write as small as you can, but big enough that you can read, you know? <laughs> there is no reason strong enough for me to stay stopped. And then if you run out of room, you come back and you go right below it and start a new line. There is no reason strong enough for me to stay stopped. And then the next line below it, plus, like a plus sign, a physical allergy to continue drinking once I stop. Okay? There is no reason strong enough for me to stay stopped plus a physical allergy to continue drinking once I start, plus a physical allergy to continue drinking once I start. One last time, there's no reason strong enough for me to stay stopped as the previous paragraph, plus a physical allergy for me to continue drinking once I start. That's what makes an alcoholic, that's it. There's two things only and two things. 
not DUIs, not divorces, not jails. Those things may happen to many people that drink abnormally or have other wounds and behave in destructive ways. Two things and two things only. When I start, I can't tell you how much I'm gonna drink. When I wanna stay stopped, I don't have the ability to, to, to commit to that promise, you know, to keep that promise, right? So just introduce us to newcomers. So now, here we go. Next paragraph, we're gonna do a lot of question mark. Uh, and then the yeses are gonna be on the left margin because on the right margin, we've written something. By the way, what I have done now is instead of a full yes, I put a little Y. You can put the Y right next to the question mark on the left margin. Okay, ready? And then we're gonna ask people to share after we go through this next couple of paragraphs. Okay, so just make it personal to you. Here's the fellow who has been puzzling you, especially in his lack of control, question mark. A Y either on the left margin or right next to the question mark, if you can relate. He or she does incre absurd, incredibly tragic things while drinking, question mark. He's a real Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, question mark. Do I seem like I have split personalities? <laughs> He's seldom mildly intoxicated. He's always more or less insanely drunk, question mark. Was that me? His disposition while drinking resembles his normal nature, but little, question mark. Do that people told me that I'm a totally different person while I'm drinking? He may be one of the finest fellows in the world. Let him drink for a day and he frequently becomes disgustingly and even dangerously antisocial, question mark after antisocial. Have I, have I experienced my own version of that? He has a positive genius for getting tight drunk uh, at, at exactly the wrong moment, particularly when some important decision must be made or engagement kept, question mark. Friends, wedding parties, um, birthdays, um, interviews, promotions, demotions. <laughs> Question mark. He's often, per he or she is per often perfectly sensible and well-balanced con concerning everything except liquor. But in that respect, he's incredibly dishonest and selfish. Question mark. So as I'm taking a new person on this, like there's a certain velocity, but we let, I let this, we let the spirit guide, right? And I, so the point is not for me to do a whole workshop for the new person. I'm not sharing extensively my experiences continuously. I'm asking about theirs. And if they get stuck, I share mine. Or as the spirit moves me, right? It's because it's about them finding themselves. But I got to share a little bit about myself so they know, right? They can relate. Did I already read this? Okay, selfish. Okay, perfect. He often possesses special abilities, skills, and aptitudes, and has a promising career ahead of him. He uses his gifts to build up a tight, the bright outlook for his family and himself, and then pulls the structure down on his head by a senseless series of sprees. Question mark. Have you ever done that? Bring everybody's hopes up? And then crash the world? <laughs> yeah, Terry's give the thumbs up. <laughs> Here, he's the fellow who, 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 who goes to bed so intoxicated, he ought to sleep the clock ground, question mark. A Y to the right, to the left, or right next to the question mark. Yet early next, yet early next morning, he searches madly for the bottle he misplaced the night before, question mark. Have you ever done that? If he can afford it, he may, he may have liquor concealed all over the house to be certain no one gets his entire supply away from him to throw down the waste pipe, question mark. Now, see, I got it. It's the spirit of it, right? I may not have put it in the waste pipe. I don't know what that is, right? But have I ever done so, something similar, right? Hid my liquor. <laughs> so don't get living alone. Have I done that? Yes, I have. As, as matters grow worse, he begins to use a combination of high power sedatives and liquor to quiet his nerves so he can go, so, so he can go to work. Then comes the day where he simply cannot make it and gets drunk all over again, question mark. Did I try different means to stay away from liquor? Marijuana maintenance program, pills, whatever I tried. Eventually went back to liquor. Perhaps he goes to the doctor who gives him morphine or some sedative with which to taper off. Then he begins to appear at hospitals, sanitariums, detoxes, emergency rooms, any version of that. Have I experienced, have you experienced that new person? And I share a little bit with them and I ask them. And I ask them, 
Okay, so now for the 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 last what one no one yeah one paragraph one long paragraph this was right so for this can we get some hands up again laser like sharing right very laser like very specific not a general share and short okay pick one or two questions from this that you can relate to so you can share uh, Nancy come on up please. Hi, I'm Nancy and I'm an alcoholic. The first uh, question that kind of hit me is um, you sell the mildly intoxicated. He was always more or less insanely drunk. I was a one and a zero. I was either at work not drinking or I was not at work and getting drunk as fast and as hard as I could. And uh, that's my laser share. Thank you, Nancy. Michelle, come on up, please. Thanks, Sally. Um, yeah, the, the one that hit me uh, was <clears throat> uh, po a positively genius at getting tight at exactly the wrong moment. I uh, had two best friends and I was maid of honor in them and I was so drunk, I, I was stumbling down the aisle and um, because I drank so much before I got there. And that was kind of my pattern. Anytime there's anything like that coming up, I would get drunk first. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Joel, come on up, please, brother. Uh, Joel, alcoholic. Um, yeah, I, I just, um, I, I got elected to a treatment chair recently and we started doing detox meetings out of the big book. And I, I'm just really excited because this is one of our main, main readings. And, um, and as, as you're sharing it, you're hitting note for note, kind of what we go through in the detox and what a powerful experience. So I just wanted to share that experience. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, brother. Uh, just two more and then we'll jump back in the book. And if you have your hands up, please keep it up and, uh, and we'll get you the next round. Uh, Maria, come on up, please. Uh, Maria, I'm an alcoholic. I identified so much with he has a positive genius for getting tight at exactly the wrong moment, particularly when some important decision must be made or engagement kept. I was an event planner for 20 years and I would work for years for one day, one night for a couple. And. Oh, you got muted. Frank, would you unmute her again, please? Sorry about that. Um, so I was a, an event planner for 20 years and I would work for sometimes years for one day for a couple and uh, show up there at their wedding, always hungover and usually drinking as well. So thanks, Ali. This is great. Thank you, Maria. Thank you so much. And uh, Lorraine, come on up, please. Hi, Ali, Lorraine, alcoholic. Yeah, the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. When I picked up again after 10 years of sobriety, I had a good friend look at me one night and say, you're a completely different person when you drink. Thank you, Lorraine. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, Tom and everybody else, if you want, please keep your hand up. Thank you so much. We're going to jump back in the book and we'll get back to you for the, for, for the next round. Uh, so, beautiful. So, like, if for the new person, right, if, if they're, this is a powerful first session, if they're relating, if they're at a place where they want help, man, you can't, <laughs> you can't help but, like, be intrigued. Hold on. This, you mean they wrote, you know how I, my experience was when I was ready, I was like, are you kidding me? They wrote a book at that time, I don't know, seven years, we'll have a lot of, it's like decades ago that describes me to a T today. That's intriguing, man. That's really intriguing. So this by no means, we're going to continue page 22. This by no means, this is by no means a comprehensive picture of the true alcoholic as our behaviors patterns vary. But this description should identify them roughly. If someone's ready and at that place, they'll identify themselves there. Okay? Why does he behave like this? If hundreds of experiences have shown him that one drink means another debacle with all the attendant suffering and humiliation, why, why is it he takes that one drink? Why can't he stay on the water wagon? What has become of the common sense and willpower that he still sometimes displays with respect to other matters? By the way, you're going to notice as we go through these sessions, uh, places where we're not going to try to unpack and say like water wagon, we, you know, if someone doesn't know, we're not going to do that I usually, unless a newcomer asks me because we're laser like focused. We want them to identify to the drinking right now, right? So there's maybe places where you think, wow, you could really talk about the reason we're not doing it because laser like focus with a new person. Um, Perhaps 
there never will be a full answer to these questions. Opinions vary considerably as to why the alcoholic reacts differently from normal people. We are not sure why. Once a certain point is reached, little can be done for him. We cannot answer that riddle, the riddle. We know that while the alcoholic keeps away from drink, as he may do for months or years, he reacts much like other men or women, okay? If you grab the yellow highlighter now, we are, or the important statement highlighter that you have, we are equally positive that once he takes any alcohol, whatever into his system, something happens, we're still highlighting yellow, both in the bodily and mental sense, which make it virtually impossible for him to stop. Stop the highlighting at the word stop. Back then, they observed this. Dr. Silkworth observed this, and he gave us this gift of something happens to you guys when you take a drink, right? Seems to be an allergy, an abnormal reaction. Apparently today, I haven't read the scientific literature. I hear the scientific literature. They've done research where alcoholics, our bodies, we metabolize alcohol differently. We're missing enzymes that metabolize alcohol all the way down to sugar and water or carbon monoxide, whatever it is, right? There's some technical stuff. There's a step missing in which in cre it, it creates a craving inside an alcoholic. That's why when an alcoholic drinks, the craving intensifies. The word craving in Alcoholics Anonymous in this big book is used not in the normal sense of the word craving. Like, you know, I'm hungry. I don't have the substance inside me. I'm craving pizza. That's not how it's used. In this big book, the word craving, the allergy of the body is, I eat the pizza and then I start to crave it more as I'm eating it and eating it and eating. <laughs> that's how it's used, right? The word craving, that's how it is. So um, the experience of any alcoholic will abundantly confirm this. Put a question mark after this, then you're gonna go through your own experience. As my experience of when I start, I can't stop when I want to, has that just put a yes right to the right of the question mark. Beautiful. Now, the last thing is, we'll come back. The last thing for this section, we got a couple of small sections to, to cover. We're going to come back to page 22, the bottom margin. There's some space in the bottom margin. We're going to do some writing there. As always, please write small, but big enough so you can read it. You're going you're gonna to need maybe two or three lines to write. Okay, maybe, depending how small you are. Okay, ready? So we've done all this. Now I want the new man to write a question, consideration, new man or woman for themselves. Because the, 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 the depth of their experience comes from their identification with this sacred text, not from my intellectual unpacking of anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right? So please write, can I identify with losing control Can I identify with losing control Can I identify with losing control of how much I drink comma once I start to drink Can I identify with losing control of how much I drink comma once I start to drink Comma, one more comma, more times than not, question mark. Okay, I hope you can, you can fit that, more times than not. Thank you, Kristen, thank you for, can I identify with losing control of how much I drink, comma, once I start to drink, comma, more times than not, question mark. So I put that more times than not there, because the person is just new. They're just discovering their relationship and uh, analyzing it with alcohol, right? The brain will start to lie. Alcoholism will start to, well, what about that time? What about that time? No, you just had a couple of beers and it, right? So let's just set the bar low more times than that. Let's just start that because we're gonna have another couple of chapters, a few pages later on in the following sessions to discover the relationship with alcohol more, okay? So after the question mark, just put a yes for yourself to the right of that. What happens if a person, I'm taking someone through the big book, first session, right? Um, new person, and they don't 
say yes to that question, or they don't seem to relate to a lot of it. Couple of options as the spirit moves, there's no cookie cutter thing. I'm always in prayer. I'm always asking God, what's my assignment? What can I do here? God, it's always, it's always the prayers inside of me, always, right? It's become a mantra. So the spirit will guide. Sometimes spirit has guided, just keep going through the rest of the first step pages. Let's see, right? Sometimes it's so clear that either they're not one of us or if they are, there's so much denial, it's just a waste of time anyways. We don't chase the man that doesn't, is not able to work with us anymore. So I stay friendly, I stay kind. Okay, brother, let's just keep going to meetings. And what I want you to do is that, because this program will be no use to you if you can't relate to the drinking in this way, right? So what we'll do is we'll keep going to meetings together. And I want you to just continue to listen to other people's drinking and, and see if you can uh, really uh, analyze your own drinking with alcohol, relationship with alcohol, and see, see if you can relate to anything. That's what I'll do. And then see what comes. If they're not one of us, they're not staying. Who would still want to stay? Right? Beautiful. Okay, so that's that's good. So that's so what I suggest now is to start as we're going through this. There, there will be some pages that are empty in the back of your book, in the back of the big book, in the back of the book. There'll be some empty blank pages, right? So grab the first blank empty page, and as we go along after each session. Just to put, put yourself directions or table of contents. Because we're going to jump around a lot in the first few sessions. And then if you are moved to just uh, sort of use this method to help a newcomer, right? You're going to forget. Where do we go first? Hold on, what page, right? Because it's not straight through. So what I would do is just put a title, the first empty page, right? Small. The title is directions, right? Number one, circle the number one. And then... So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the direction and from now on you can write whatever you want, right? So I try to use as much point forms as I can, shorthands as I can, so I understand. So for page, I always put P or PG, right? Page 20, first is one ST, first full paragraph as PAR, right? That's how I do it. Page 20, first full paragraph in quotation, you may have already dot, 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 end of quotation. That's the first line, the first pair, that, right? So Page 20, first full pair, paragraph, in quotation mark, you may have already, end of quotation. And then to top of page 23. To top of a page 23. And then in brackets after that, I put qualification intro, qualification intro, so I know. When I'm down the road and I'm taking a newcomer, where do I start? What page, paragraph, exactly? It tells me exactly. And so what this, how beautiful this is that my experience was, so again, I didn't need to, I need to remember or copy or duplicate the messenger that was in front of me. I just duplicate the message, right? And then what this does is this highlighting and question marks and then the, this table of contents, the new person, when they are ready to, at step 12, they have a, they have a sort of a way to go about doing it, right? They're not as afraid because they have a method. They just go back and, okay, that's what I do. I just follow. It's like paint by number uh, spirituality. So simple. I go here, I go here, I go here. And then God speaks whatever he needs to speak through me and through the new person. The most incredible thing. Okay, so we're good with that. So if you guys don't mind, not, we're jumping around a little bit, right? So I have a, I have a sort of a, a agenda of certain things I want to cover each session. We'll, we'll see what spirit has, right? So the next two more things we're going to cover, and then hopefully we have room for questions. Um, if you go to the page at the beginning of the book where it says Alcoholics Anonymous, and it says the story of how many thousands, uh, how many thousands of men and women have recovered from alcoholism, you can put on speaker view if you want, and you can really see where I am. I'm putting my book in front of the Facebook. So by the way, for friends that don't know, in the top right-hand corner of this entire thing, it says view. You can go gallery view, speaker view, whatever you're comfortable with. Okay? So that page. That page where it says Alcoholics Anonymous. <laughs> what I'd like you to do first, everybody, please, draw a circle and triangle. Let, let, what am I doing? I took a picture of this. I was a little prepared on this one. Let me try this one. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Everyone can see this? So please start off with only the circle and triangle, okay? Don't worry about the notes so much. 
So I just wanted to show you like that's approximately the size and the center of the circle and triangle that we're doing. Just draw it and then write any notes, you need recovery service, anything you see, just start writing. And we'll, we'll come back and I'll, and I'll read everything. I just wanna, so just uh, for those historians and for those that know better than I do, please forgive me if I'm making a mistake, but I understand the story goes <laughs> that the circle and triangle apparently was part of our big book, like the stamp of or whatever, the first few editions, one or two editions, right? And I, from what I heard from some archivists, from some elders, is that some, we lost the copyrights to it or something like that. That's why the circle and triangle is no longer in the fourth edition and maybe third edition too, right? So we're gonna draw it back in there. This circle and triangle is a blueprint of this program. It's a map. So it's so important, once I get the newcomer, new person, those two pages, right? to identify, get intrigued, then we go right to the blueprint. We right to the map. I wanna have a map. If I don't know where I'm going, I'm lost, right? Cause we're gonna come back to this map sometimes. <clears throat> Unity recovery service. I'm gonna have this up and I'm gonna talk, okay? So maybe better this way. So, <clears throat> so first, as you see, uh, on, it says the first promise of hope, it says over there. It says Alcoholics Anonymous, lying under it, it says the first promise of hope a colon after it. The story of pink, remember the way I, we use pink is pink. So important statements is yellow, prayers, promises, meditations, all in pink. And it's so useful when you, when you person opens the big book after and see all the promises and all the prayers, right? So this is the first promise of this book, right? Please highlight in pink or whatever highlighter you assign prayers and promises to how many thousands of men and women have recovered from alcoholism. It's a promise, first promise of this book. Bill Wilson tells us, they're the first 100 tells us, tell us we're gonna recover. We're gonna bring, bring, come back to health from this illness, from the death of despair of this illness. Circle the word recover. Circle the word recover, okay? So I was told that how I read that is not how many, like how many, how many thousands, like how, as in how to. I mean, this big book would meet me exactly where I am, right? <laughs> it, God would feed me whatever I need to be fed. And how I read that how is how to. How many thousands of men and women have recovered from alcoholism? This is the story, this big book, right? <laughs> so Unity Recovery th Service, three-part program. To the left, if you see to the left of outside of the circle Unity, I put a point, little bullet mark and Meetings, that's an and sign and home group. Meetings and home group, if you're unable to read it. Meetings and home group. Below that, a little bullet point, service at meetings. Service at meetings. Below that, 12 tradition. So somewhere around there, please fit that. I hope everyone can see it as well if you put, if you put, uh, um, the speaker view. So meetings at home group on the unity side, service at meetings, 12 traditions. Okay. Unity is where I bring the body to. The meetings are super important. It's the first part of the program, unity. But I gotta go to meetings. Meetings are important. In fact, Bill Wilson talks about in the, uh, in the, in the 12 and 12 somewhere, the traditions, uh, like we believe the alcoholic would not survive without a group. We do this thing together, we, we. The bottom part is the recovery portion of this program. Right below the circle, what I've written is bullet point, 12 steps as outlined in the BB, means big book, remember short form, in the big book, 12 steps as outlined in the big book. That's where the recovery is, the, 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 the solution is. And below it, I put in brackets, title PG, title page to page 164. That's where the solution portion of this book is. The rest is stories, just like going to open speaker meetings, right? I can relate to, have I felt like that? Have I, have I experienced that? Can this program work for me too? Okay. 12 steps as outlined in the big book, title page to page 164, okay? Unity recovery. So I wanna share something with you guys. When I woke, cause I was in and out for seven years, right? Um, I was in that for seven years. And then when, when I was ready and Donna took me through the big book, I just was on fire, right? And, and there was a period of time where I, I, I guess maybe it's a rite of passage. Everybody goes through this development stage. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just what it is, right? I really thought I knew a lot. 
and I really thought everyone else was doing it wrong. <laughs> you know? And then I thought I wasn't so much about meetings at home group. I would hit a meeting here and there. I would just uh, take people through the big book uh, in coffee shops, sponsor people like that, right? And I got really, really sick because this disease is cunning, baffling, and powerful, man. Sick, spiritually sick, as in separate from you guys. Full of, de full of uh, de depression and agitation and anger. And this disease started to talk to me that I'm different than you guys. So from my experience, um, the steps and the fellowship go together. So meetings and steps go together, the traditions, right? <clears throat> so at this point in time, I'm not unpacking too much about the tradition and everything with the newcomer, right? Just meeting steps. And then the third part, so here, please set aside everything. This may be different than what some of the friends here understand service to be. Doesn't mean it's the only way, but just please set aside, right? If you notice, let's write it first. Service side, we put 12th step. 12th step, colon. And I'm just going to read what I wrote in case you can't read it. Try to fit it there somewhere. With an awakened spirit, comma, carrying this message to alcoholics and being of service to people in our areas of my life. With an awakened spirit, carrying this message to alcoholics and being of service to people in all areas of my life. So, 12th step. I, there was a period of time where um, I was told that unity recovery service, service is the AA structure, GSR, uh, intergroup rap, all that kind of stuff, right? So what was introduced to me by a long timers, um, some long time is that if, if, if I am narrowing the service side of this beautiful program to a structure, I'm cutting myself short, okay? So that service part, we're gonna, we put in the unity part, service at meeting, service at a structure, right? This service is with an awakened spirit. I go through this process and this with a, with a motive, with a heart to be a servant and God will give me things to do. And my service is in the 12th step. I tried to pass this message on to other alcoholics, but wait, practice principles in, in my affairs, that covers everything else in life, doesn't it? I got to be a servant in my marriage, as a father, at work, right? I got to be a servant. So that umbrella of service, it covers, I believe it's a lot more broader and deeper in service. And I'm not telling God because I know friends that have shared with me privately decades in sobriety. Ali, I've been dying. I'm the GSR, I'm the this, that, I'm the delegate. I'm dying, man. Because I got to keep busy, just be in service. Busy, 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 busy. No, 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 no. no. I stay in this program. I try to pass this message on. God, how can I serve you today? And God gives me things to do to serve his kids. I got to stay open to that. So please just keep an open mind. That, that okay. So now to the newcomer, um, I'm not going to go as depth in that with the newcomer, right? Just this, the map of it, right? And I want to share with the newcomer that at any time in my recovery, any time, if I'm for an extended period of time, I'm off, feeling agitated, full of fear, right? I can come to this roadmap and see what am I missing here? <laughs> what am I missing here? Are there amends that I could be making that I'm not? Uh, have I been doing prayer and meditation? Can I build that practice? Have I been going to meetings, try to pass this message on? Do I maybe need to write an inventory in the recovery portion? Am I going to meetings? Am I service up? Do I have a home group that I attend? Do I try to practice prayer? Right? So I can see where I'm missing here at any time. It's so beautiful. It's an action program. It doesn't make me a bad person. It doesn't mean I'm, I'm lacking in moral character. Literally, action, result. I'm not getting the result for extended period of time. Let's go back to the GPS. GPS, what do I have to do? Where do I have to go? That's the GPS <laughs> right there, okay? And the last part, the note at the bottom, at the bottom you'll see, please write this. I will only get the promises of this three-part program, comma, if I'm in all three parts. I will only get the promises of this three-part program if I'm in all three parts, okay? I'm gonna stop sharing now. If you didn't get the notes, please find a partner. Make sure to find a partner, okay?
Okay, well, it's so much better to see your faces on that page. Okay. Everyone good with that? Right? If I'm in three parts, just like, just like, you know, when you have a, a like if, if a professional photographer, right? They have some very expensive cameras and wedding pictures and baby pictures, right? I understand there's a stand called a tripod that they put this expensive heavy camera, right? So if this tripod, this three-part program, if any of these legs of this tripod is a little bit wobbly, is not as strong, maybe if every, if maybe if there's not a cloud on the horizon, it'll keep standing. The slightest little brush against this tripod is going to break. My recovery is the same. The slightest little tremor in life, if I'm not fully engaged, I'm not talking about perfectly, to the best of my ability, you know what I mean, in all three parts. That's how I get the promise of this program. Steps without fellowship has never worked for me. It didn't work for them either, <laughs> right? Okay, beautiful, so it sounds good. Uh, and the last thing we're gonna do, and then we're gonna come to some questions and sharing. Um, now, if you would please, cause I wanna get this in here. If you would please go to the beginning of the big book. If there's an empty page at the beginning, just grab an empty page at the beginning, at the beginning of the book. If there's a blank page, just grab the blank page, please. Okay, just grab a blank page. Okay, at the very top left, please. So write the word yellow, or if you don't have a yellow highlighter, whatever color highlighter you have, that's for important statements, write that word, okay? So I have yellow highlighter. I'm assigning it as important statements. You have the word yellow, top left. Put a little arrow to the right and please write strong statements. So one line, yellow, arrow to the right, strong statements. If you grab your yellow highlighter, highlight the word yellow that you wrote. If it's orange for you, highlight the word orange, orange for you, right? Yellow, strong statements. This is for the benefit of the new person, right? In case if we, okay, yellow, strong statements. Okay. Right below that, right below the word yellow. Okay, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, can you show you? Okay, here we go. If you put on, if you put on speaker view, you'll see my page now. See how you see how I've done it, right? Right below the word yellow, write the word pink. Spotlighted. Thank you for whoever has highlighted that. Write the word pink. Or if you don't have pink, if you had another highlighter that you've assigned to prayers and promises, get like that. So just stop highlighting now. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just thank you so much. I'll, I'll read it. So the pink, the word pink, uh, arrow to the right, please write prayers and promises. Yellow, important statements, pink, highlighted pink, prayers and promises. And you can put meditations in there too. It's such a beautiful experience to open the big book and see all the pink, prayers and promises. So when you put, right below it, you're gonna have some room there. Above, uh, you have some room there, please. Write the title, set aside prayer, and then underline it. Set aside prayer, right below that. Set aside prayer, underline it. I wanna give the newcomer a version of that. And I'm gonna make sure to let them know, look, whatever version comes from your heart, the words don't even matter. It's if I'm expressing the idea from my heart, right? But I'm gonna, Please forget, I'm just gonna give you one version here that I have, okay? If you guys wanna write it down, if not, write your own version, whatever you wanna do, okay, ready? So set aside prayer in the center, we're gonna underline, now we're gonna write below, okay? God, please set aside everything that I think I know, comma. God, please set aside everything that I think I know, comma. for an open mind and a new experience, period. For an open mind and a new experience, period. So God, please set aside everything that I think I know, comma, for an open mind and a new experience, period. Below it, uh, right, right, the next line, next sentence. To set aside everything that I think I know, comma. Thank you, Chris, has also. To set aside everything that I think I know, comma. Dina, you're waving, everything okay?
Dina, you're waving at me. Everything okay with you? I can't no? see who's waving. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. no problem. Sorry, I was just moved because I was practically waving. Okay, never mind. Sorry. So to set aside everything that I think I know, comma, is to let your light in, period. Is to let your light in, period. So I read the whole thing again. God, please set aside everything that I think I know, comma, for an open mind and a new experience, period. To set aside everything that I think I know, comma, is to let your light in, period. Everyone can still hear me? Yeah? Wait? Yeah, okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, beautiful. Okay, beautiful. So we got that. Okay, a version of the set aside prayer. We're almost done for today. We're going to come up with some questions and some sharing. So... Below that, give some space. Below that, there should be some empty space. Please write the title, Spiritual Contract. In the center of the page below it, you'd write the title, Spiritual Contract, underline it, and highlight the title in yellow. Spiritual Contract. Also highlight in yellow, set aside prayer, the, like the title, it says set aside prayer, okay? Just want to make it stand up. So Spiritual Contract. We're going to do a spiritual contract together. Underline and yellow highlighted. Thank you, Krista. Spiritual contract. Okay, so now, so uh, please write this along with me, but put your name and then we'll talk about it a little bit. Okay, so I have the new person write this contract together. We're going to enter into a contract together. By this, this is nothing new. This is in the big book a few different times in different ways. We'll, we'll touch on it. Okay, so please write this. I. Write your own name. I wrote Ali. I, you write your own name, comma, I, Ali, comma, I, comma, I'm willing to go to any length I'm willing to go to any length for a spiritual experience, comma, For a spiritual experience, comma, in order to recover from the hopelessness of this illness, period. In order to recover from the hopelessness of this illness, period. I, Ali, am willing to go to any length for a spiritual experience, comma, in order to recover from the hopelessness of this illness, period. Okay. Thank you, Kristen, again. Now, if you agree with this for the rest of this workshop, right? Or Mr. Newcomer, <laughs> Mr. or Ms. Newcomer, I know you guys are not newcomers, actually. Right? But if, 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 if you're willing to really give it your all, and we, please sign your name under this. I had the person sign them. I put Ali as before I signed it. <laughs> I was so willing. I was so willing. And then, and then below your signature, please write the time, the day, the date, and the year. I put my original time was for me, 3.12 p.m. Friday, January the 27th, 2012. <laughs> okay. So now I want the person to be in this. So this contract and that circle and triangle, we may have to revisit sometimes with a new person, right? The person has to be willing. The, the, the big book talks about the desire has to come from within. We don't force anybody. The desire has to come from within, right? Now, in the big book, there's a few different places. The big book technicians, please forgive me if I miss something, but I believe there's three different places, two or three different places where they talk about going to any lengths, right? First place is in how it works. Do you want what we have? Are you willing to go to any lengths to get it, right? That's where this contract comes from. The next place is in the step eight paragraph on page 76, step eight paragraph. Remember, the reminders. Remember at the beginning, you said you're going to go to any lengths. And then the next one is in step nine somewhere pages. Remember, you said you're going to go to any length. So that's where the contract comes from. Um, all right. So thank you, guys. That's that's the first session. That's what we had to cover. We're going to go to some questions and sharing a little bit. Uh, we have a few more minutes. I just, just, just one thing quickly I forgot to mention. So when I said my last drink was 
so I have 12 years of experience of just sponsoring people in this way, right? And just evolution of this and just this, what has been presented to me has been very profound and powerful. Doesn't mean that's the case for everybody. That's just my experience I'm sharing, right? So, but, but my sobriety is over seven years. I want you to know that, okay? It's important that you know that. In 2016, I was coming up to five years and I wasn't sharing myself honestly. I thought there was an image to uphold and my wife went to have minor surgery. She came back home with some Percocets and I took a couple of pills and I renewed them the, the, the next day. So my sobriety is over seven years, but in, for the sake of this workshop, I didn't go anywhere. You understand? I didn't take a drink, renewed it. I was in this program. I've been sponsoring nonstop for 12 years. So I'm sharing my experience of 12 years but I'm very clear what my sobriety is. I'm so grateful for that renewal of sobriety because I became more humble. <laughs> I became more humble service, okay? So thank you very much, guys. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So before we close this up, just uh, we got a few hands up, a few minutes. I just want to give a chance to just quick shares or quick uh, any questions, please. Tom, brother, would you come on up? Tom, Clyde. What, what are you hearing now? Yeah. Thanks, Ellie. As I say, uh, my, 25 years ago, after five years of sobriety, my sponsor said to me, why don't we do the big book? And he did it just like this, line by line. That was over 25 years ago. And uh, when I saw this chance come up, I'd love to do it again. Because, and strangely enough, last weekend, a fellow came up to me for 20 years of sobriety and asked me to be his sponsor. Because he'd been a while since been through it. So it's all new, so I'm going to work with it. But I'll be away for two weeks, but hopefully I'll be able to catch it from Cuba. Thanks very much. Beautiful. Thank you so much for being here, brother. Thank you so much. Amazing. Hopefully you can get a partner that can help you as well if you can't make it. Matthew, come on up, brother, please. I just want to say thank you so much for your service. And uh, could you please notify me so I can slide into this 45-year celebration when the next appointment is for all of us here? It's, it's it's the same time, same place, same Zoom every Saturday. God Thanks. bless you. See you at ORC. Oh, God bless you, brother. Thank you so well, much. I'll see yes, you see next you Saturday. Yes, sir. See you there. Thank Carolyn? You. You just got yeah, music, I love this. I mean, I've been sober a long time and... Uh, this is like getting excited all over again. And it's a little different approach. And I completely agree with people who think that doing service at the, you know, they're in all the organizational things and, and they're, I know some, and they're basket cases, but they're on this committee and that committee and, you know, and, but 52 years and I'm getting excited all over again. Thank you. Uh, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing. Wayne, my brother, come on up, please. Hi, good day, Ali. My name is William. I'm an alcoholic. I just want to log on to say that I raise my hand to tell you thank you very much for this workshop. I have already learned so much in just an hour and a few minutes. This new experience is amazing. I've gone through this big book already, think twice, but I've never taken anybody through it. Because I, like you, I am very scared. Because I have the power to kill someone. And I, but thank you for this opportunity of this new experience. Thank you very much, Ali. And I like what you said. And I like what you said about. And it was said to me that service is begins at the general service level. And then I read from the 12 and 12. And I would not read it on page 110. What our co-founder said about service. I would just like you to read it, and you will see where I got my information from 20 years ago. Thank you, Ali. God Thank bless you, you and keep you safe and your family. Thank God you very you. much for Thank this experience. You. Thank you so much, brother. God bless you. Thank you very much. Patsy, come on up, please. Hi. Um, is, is this the first session of this? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, can you just, uh, re you know, the set aside prayer? I have God, please set aside everything I think I know for an open mind and new experience. But then I missed the, the, the second part of that. Kristen's gonna put it for you in the chat. Thank you so you. much. Thank you, Kristen. Thank, thank you, Betsy. Carol, thank Carolina, you. hi. Hi, Carolina. 
Uh, hi everyone, my name is Karolina Alcoholic Ali. Thank you so much. That was absolutely wonderful. And I, I'm doing my big book with my sponsor and then with a lady who's 35 years sober. So I'm thinking, I possibly I've already highlighted everything. No way, I have lighted so much more today and your color is green in my big book. But what I want to say that writing my sobriety date in a big book, and I love that contract, I'm going to use it. But writing that sobriety date, it was crucial for me on the days when I, as a newcomer, I felt low or, you know, agitated or I didn't want to do this program. My character defect of pride, you know, kept me in because I'm thinking there's no way I want to cross that date over right, right. and write a different date. So writing that date for me was so monumental in my recovery. So thank you so Amazing. much. Thank you, Carolina. Thank you. A few more hands and then we'll close the meeting and we'll stay out and still we'll stay uh, still for hands and questions. Okay. So there's a couple more hands. We'll close the meeting now so we can we're a couple of minutes over time, but we'll, I'm going to stay. Any questions and comments, please stay. Louisa, come on up, please. Hi everyone, alcoholic Louisa. Thanks so much, Ali. You're such a humble servant. Thank you so much. But I wanted to ask. Um, so I have taken um, a few through the big books. Do you always start at page twenty? Yeah, this is the method always. I know because so, I started with the preface and then talking about the four words. Yeah. Um, so, so Louisa, yeah, that's that was the uh, basically one of the reasons why I, I wanted to share this because I've had that experience and uh, some people that I lose, right? So the, see, when someone is new with this method, we jump around and surgically search out step one stuff. Yeah. And then we go to the step one and two stuff. We go to the rest of the steps after working with others. When the person's awakened, we come back to the practice and cover all of that. And then the new person, because they've awakened experienced it, they love the information, the preface and the history, just like, you know what I mean? But at the beginning, yeah. it just it doesn't do anything to move them forward as interesting as it may be. For That's us. true. Yeah. My experience doesn't mean, doesn't mean for everybody, it's just my experience, you know? Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Th thank you very much. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see. Okay. Marcy, come on up, please. So Ma Mary, come on up, please. Thanks, Ali. Um, Mary, um, Mary alcoholic. It was a l great presentation. I missed a little bit. I'm a little, I was a little late. I was doing something else. It was for a, but um, so we're meeting every Saturday and is this going to, is this recorded? Yes, ma'am. So we're meeting every Saturday, approximately 12 weeks. We'll see how it goes, Perfect. right? Um, it, it, it is going to be recorded. Uh, I haven't, uh, so here's the thing. I, I was contemplating and praying a lot uh, about the recent recording. We're le leaning against not releasing recordings for a couple of different reasons. I think it'll be a lot less effective for people if recordings are released because what will happen is that tendency to for some people uh, okay fine i'm going to catch the recording but the experience is being here that's the experience you know what i mean it's not just so that's why the recordings are not going to be released at a later date after all the 12 sessions after some prayer and consultation with some elders if we find that it'll be beneficial we'll release the whole thing but for now no we're encouraging to find partners to find partners and then your partner can tell you what you've missed and all that kind of stuff Okay, I will do that. Thank you so much. Okay. And I'll see you You're next welcome. Saturday. You're welcome. See you next <laughs> Enjoy Saturday. Enjoy the rest of your numbers, time till then. God bless you. Please Thank exchange you. numbers. Please find the team together. So, uh, Yuna, come on up, please. Una, or Yuna, sorry. <laughs> Una. You're close. You're close. It's Una, Una alcoholic. Una, hi, and hi. I just, that last person just covered my question on recording um, and that because I didn't, I thought maybe I had done it by accident. That's how, excuse the stupidness. But I just thought, I said, I'd stay on to say thanks a million. It's fantastic. And um, I love your enthusiasm. And it's it's just great to have such a, a world of family here on a Saturday afternoon. Yes, man. God bless you. Thank you for being here. I'm just so grateful for you guys. Thank you so much for allowing this, uh, you know, just, um, so Yvette, come on up, please. And then we're going to end that sunny, okay? I'm sorry. I know we're five, six minutes over time. Sorry, everybody. If, if you got to go, go. Yvette, come on up, please. Hi, good morning, everyone. My name is Yvette. I am an alcoholic. I'm Ali. Thank you so much. Uh, my sobriety date is May 8th, 2023. So thank you for this extra little, uh, some more tools I can add into my toolbox to demystify not just the why of sponsorship, but how to go about doing it. So thank you so much for that. Thank you, Yvette. Thank you so much for being here. Kit, come on up, please. 
There we go. Hi, thank you so much for this workshop. I'm Kit and I'm an alcoholic. Uh, my question is, you talked about the, the spiritual contract um, with the sponsee. Are you suggesting though that we're introducing that contract right in the first session with our sponsee? Because I'm just wondering, we haven't even talked to them yet about the spiritual elements of the program. We haven't read the spiritual experience page. We haven't you know, even read the doctor's opinion talking about that. So do, do you get resistance so on that? Good, good, good question. So I'll answer in two parts. One, um, set aside that experience that you have. Set that aside. Okay? So that, that's the first thing. Um, and the second thing is when a person is, from my experience, uh, when a person is relating and ready and intrigued and in pain, they're not nitpicking at this word or that word mm. at all. You know, they're just not, if they're really nitpicking and battling me, then they're not relating to a lot of it, you know? So what I do is if, if the question comes up, I encourage it, a conversation. I just sort of gloss, not gloss over in a general way. Like, so I'll tell you this kid. So I haven't had any resistance for that reason and for because the first, uh, the first, uh, like I ha I build relationships with people. Like if they ask me to sponsor them or a thing, right? So in the first conversation or a coffee, I'm telling them about my drinking. I'm asking them about their drinking and I'm telling them about the program. You know, I'm telling them like this is a spiritual mm -hmm. program, it's a spiritual solution. So that, I think that answers your question better. I've already done that in my, in the first okay. sort of session that I've talked to them about it, right? And at that time, uh, uh, maybe I should have mentioned that, yeah. So. Uh, or maybe in the first sitting before the big book opens or the first session before we make a big book appointment, I talk about that. You know, the spiritual program, I, this is what works for me. Um, do you want what we have? You know, do you want to try it? Do you think I have a problem? So they've already sort of agreed. Thank you for that. You know, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah, that, that makes sense. See, as I'm talking, it's coming to me. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, kid. <laughs> Sunny, come on up, please. Sunny, we can't hear you. Is, is your volume up on your mic? No, I'm sorry. I don't know if I think it's a volume on your mic. Try again. There you go. Try again now. I'm sorry. The volume on your mic, we can't hear you. But next week, okay? Next week. Next week. Nice to see you. Thank you for being here. Eileen, last one. Thank you, Sunny. Hi. Thanks, Ali. Thanks, everybody. My, I just have a quick question. You had the um, the yellow highlighter for important statement. You had the pink highlighter for prayers and promises. And then did you have a separate highlighter for the questions or just the question mark? That's a, just a question mark. Very good. Okay, thanks yeah, so that's much. Good. Oh, you're welcome thanks. because you're, you're very sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to thank Kristen because I sent her a message too in the messages. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much for that question. Yeah. So, see, what I've I, my original sponsor took me to the big book in an efficient way, as I, you know, it's become even more efficient than that. And she had five, six highlighters. It's also like we try to make it as little yeah. as possible, you know, as just as clean as possible, right? So we can literally. I mean, we all know we can highlight almost every sentence of uh -huh. this big book. It's so, mm -hmm. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're highlighting things that maybe I will repeat it so many times that are just some things that really pop out. We want to ask the make sure the newcomer considers it and takes a look at it. So that's all. That's all that is. Okay. Thank you so much. Kristen, come on up. I can't, Sorry, Ali, on just up. one question from the chat. And it was, do you put the concept in the circle triangle at the start? Yeah, sure. I'm sorry. You could do that. So you could you could put it you could put it. I guess um, where the unity part is. I don't usually at that point with a newcomer, but you can if you want. So the unity uh, home group service at meetings. Uh, you could also put concepts and you could put it there. I, I put all of that in the unity part. All that service stuff in the unity part. All right, Mickey, come on up, please.